So again, good morning, everyone, and thank you for uh, coming on such short notice. Uh, my name is Altaf Station Walla, and I'm President and CEO of Mackenzie Health. Uh, I'd like to just acknowledge a number of people. First of all, the staff from Mackenzie Health, our senior staff, volunteers, physicians. Thank you for, again, coming here today uh, for a very exciting announcement. Uh, Honorable Stephen Del Duca, MPP for Vaughan and Minister of Economic and Development. Thank you for coming, Stephen. Honorable Reza Moridi, uh, MPP for Richmond Hill and Minister of Research, Innovation and Science. Uh, Honorable Mauricio Bevilacqua, the Mayor of Vaughan. And Honorable Dave Barrow, Mayor of Richmond Hill. So I think uh, we have a lot of great people here. <laughs> a few more acknowledgments. Uh, Stephen Smith from uh, the Central Lynn. Stephen, thank you for coming. And I, I think we also have Tony Ianni, uh, board chair, sitting right there as well. So Tony, thank you for coming as well. And uh, we have a number of councillors, both uh, from Vaughan and Richmond Hill, so thank you for coming again for uh, a very exciting uh, day in terms of funding for uh, Mackenzie Health. Um, it's quite amazing that we're at this location today, and I think when we thought about this announcement, and I did uh, speak to Stephen and Reza, that this would be a very apropos place to talk about the importance of health care and what it means to a community. Uh, what's unique about this location is it's the first net new hospital to be built in this province in over 30 years. And we pre really do appreciate the fact that there is a capacity crunch in healthcare and in hospitals, and the government is recognizing that. So this is a very exciting moment when we look at this uh, building that's emerging from the ground, and I have the benefit living in Woodbridge, driving past this site every single day, uh, uh, twice a day, uh, and it's just amazing to see the progress that's being made and seeing this uh, building emerge from the ground. And kudos to this government for the massive capital investment that's been made, $1.3 billion uh, for a total project of 1.6 to make this uh, hospital a reality. But why? <laughs> but why is this hospital so important? Well, obviously it's very important to the residents of Vaughan uh, because Vaughan has not had a healthcare facility in its jurisdiction for some time. But more importantly, it starts to relieve pressure off other hospitals, and in this case, the Mackenzie Richmond Hill Hospital. Um, that one site has been trying to manage the growth in both Richmond Hill, Vaughan, and King, and clearly one hospital is not enough for uh, the growth and the aging that's occurring in this community. Uh, we continue to uh, work away to ensure that we can deliver the best uh, care that we can, uh, in very challenging circumstances, and I think we are all aware of the pressures uh, that the flu season put on hospitals uh, over the last number of months. We've had a huge surge in ED activity, and that's caused patients to be cared for in very challenging places. But I want to acknowledge our staff um, and the support of the community that has enabled us to weather this storm, and we are very happy that the flu season is actually um, uh, behind us now, so that peak has actually occurred. So we're in a much better place. But the reality is that the Mackenzie Richmond Hill Hospital sees anywhere from 320 to 350 patients every single day in its emergency department. So uh, the reality of what we are facing is that as much as this amazing new building that's to the right of us will be open in uh, 2020, uh, the reality is that growth and aging continues to occur um, uh, in the interim. So we continue to look for support from the government to find innovative solutions to ensure that we can meet the needs of this, of this community. And obviously, investments uh, in operating dollars are fundamental to improve access, to improve wait times, and ultimately to improve care and enhance, uh, enhance the experience of patients in this community. We were very fortunate that the government was quite innovative in the last little while. And we were able to open uh, a facility just a little bit south of here, the uh, old York Finch site of Humber, as a reactivation center. So that has gone a long way of relieving some temporary pressure. And it is obviously a bridge till the Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital opens. And we've been fortunate that 90 beds have been funded by the government for Mackenzie Health to facilitate uh, that transition. So again, uh, operating dollars are fundamental to improve access. I think the government is recognizing that uh, by the continued uh, support for those operating dollars. But we will continue to need that because, as you can appreciate, we have a net new hospital fund over the next number of years. So that's a massive injection of operating dollars to support, at the end of the day, two full-service hospitals in this community. 
So I just wanted to provide some context and give you a sense of uh, how this impacts Mackenzie Health and uh, the, the support that we've had and the support that we hope to continue to have uh, as we go forward. So with that, I'm going to introduce Stephen Del Duca to provide some remarks from the government. Well, good morning, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so very happy to be here with all of you for what I know is an important and, uh, frankly, very serious announcement that's good news. Good news for Vaughan, good news for Richmond Hill, good news for uh, all of Southwest York Region. But I want to start off, if I could, for a quick second with a story, and only a story because uh, this particular story, because of what you heard, I think most of you heard Altoff say when he was suggesting to Mayor Barrow that he come and sit in the front row and and how, of course, by sitting in the front row, uh, you know, you have to stay wide awake and having everybody come, come forward. It, it reminded me of a story from just this morning, actually, when I was sitting down to breakfast with my daughters, Grace and Talia, 10 and 6. Grace, in particular, can be a bit of a character sometimes. She asked me at breakfast this morning, what are you going to be doing today, Daddy? I said, well, you know, sweetheart, the first, the first thing I'm doing, I'm going to be standing at a podium in front of many friends, and I'm going to be delivering a bit, bit of a speech. And she looked at me, and she said, well, what's a speech? I said, well, you know, a speech is, speech is kind of like those bedtime stories that I, that I read to you, that I read to you in the evening, except it's for adults. <laughs> and uh, she looked at me as she was eating her waffles. That's what she had for breakfast this morning. Uh, they weren't homemade, in case you were wondering. They were out of the freezer and in the toaster. She looked at me and she said, uh, well, does that mean that when you're done the speech, the adults fall asleep? <laughs> so I looked back at her and I said, oh, sweetheart. Sometimes they don't even wait that long. <laughs> anyway, I am, I, as I said, right off the top, I am uh, very happy to be here in this particular location, in this, uh, this wonderful, uh, wonderful venue that we are all in today, that we're gathered in today. Uh, and to be here back, this is my first formal time, I think, back on the site, uh, notwithstanding the times that I aimlessly drive around here just to watch the magical transformation, which I do, I will admit, from time to time, uh, just to see the progress and to have seen the cranes go up. But this is my first time formally back on the site, I believe, since we broke ground uh, a, number of, a, a number of months ago. And to see the progress that's taking place here uh, in the new hospital that's being built that will serve this community and serve it so well is really a treat for me and I know for all of us. And to just see the progress uh, is something that's, uh, that's truly, uh, truly encouraging. So to Tony as board chair and to Altaf as CEO and to the rest of the team who are here, uh, and to Ingrid from the foundation, uh, I just want to say on behalf of our government and on behalf of myself and my family as a resident here also in Woodbridge, I've now lived here in Vaughan for just about 30 years, I just wanted to say thank you because uh, this, has, um, this has taken incredible, an incredible team effort over many, many years. And to get to the point where we are uh, is something, again, that is truly magical and couldn't have happened if it wasn't for the spirit of collaboration and the incredible teamwork and the incredible effort. So, and the enthusiasm and the persistence and the relentlessness, uh, which are all very, very good things. So I wanted to thank uh, all of you from the entire team uh, from Mackenzie Health for doing such extraordinary work. And I think you all deserve a big round of applause. <laughs> and also to my mayor, uh, Maurizio Babalacqua, and to the mayor of Richmond Hill, Dave Barrow, uh, and to the councillors who are here, we wouldn't, we wouldn't be in a strong position as it relates to providing more support for health care across Vaughan and Richmond Hill and York Region if we didn't have incredible municipal partners who have been with us every step of the way and have shown us tremendous uh, leadership, uh, both in terms of funding support and also in terms of their advocacy. So to both mayors and all councillors who are here, thank you so much for helping us on this journey. We're, we're not quite done yet. We still know that we have more work to do, but it's so much, more, uh, so much more enjoyable when you have partners at other levels of government who are standing shoulder to shoulder with you. And I would also point out, for what it's worth, that I did hear from both of our federal members, Deb Schult and Francesco Cervera, who were invited to join us today. They both, they both really wanted to be with us here this morning. There's a bit of a procedural game that's being played in Ottawa with marathon votes that has unfortunately kept both Deb and Francesco from being here this morning. But I should say, on their behalf, if I could, they are also incredible champions for this hospital and for healthcare across the region, and I want to thank them. So there is a formal announcement uh, that we are here to make today with respect to providing more operating funding support to hospitals generally across the province, but also specifically uh, to Mackenzie Health. And can I just say off the top, as Altaf was speaking, both Reza and I have the 
opportunity on a number of occasions to speak with Altaf and with Tony and other members. I just want you to know, Altaf, the, the message that you are delivering from the podium uh, is a message that is well understood by the local members of provincial parliament. Uh, we, we have had those conversations. We know that notwithstanding today's announcement, which I promise I will get to in just a second, um, before you all fall asleep, I promise. Uh, I, I will let you know, we know the work is not yet done, and I will speak for myself, but I'm pretty sure Reza feels the same way. I think we're also very fortunate in that the current Minister of Health is a York Region MPP who is well aware of some of the challenges that we have with respect to the growth in this area and the need for more support. We know our work is not yet done. So I heard the message, we've heard the message loud and clear, and we'll continue to partner with you and work with you to, uh, to, to make sure that Mackenzie Health has what, it's, has what it needs so that it can continue to provide exceptional care close to home for the people that we are proud to represent. So let me now get to the actual really fantastic news. Today I'm here with my very dear friend and colleague and neighbor, uh, Dr. Reza Moridi, Minister Reza Moridi, to announce officially that as part of the 2018 Ontario budget, which will be formally announced or, or introduced in the legislature a little bit later this week, our Ontario government is investing across the province an additional $822 million to support hospitals in every corner of Ontario. So at a, at a, at a high level. So for what it's worth, this is the biggest single government investment in hospitals in about a decade. It represents an overall increase of 4.6% for the hospital sector on top of a little bit more than 3% increase that was provided just last year. This includes the $187 million that was announced in February to support access to care and to reduce wait times. This additional funding, and again, this is province-wide, this additional funding will help patients by giving them access to 26,000 more MRI operating hours, 14,000 more surgical and medical procedures, and 3,000 more cardiac procedures. It will also mean more essential services in Ontario hospitals, including cardiac care, critical care, chemotherapy, and treatment for stroke. So specifically here, closer to home, the really good news for our community, our broader community, and the really good news for Mackenzie Health is that this announcement means that our government will be providing Mackenzie Health with an increase, or the funding to Mackenzie Health will increase by more than $21.1 million. So congratulations to Mackenzie Health for this infusion. Our government re realizes and recognizes that nobody knows their hospital, nobody knows their community, their patients, and the community's needs better than the people who work in a hospital, and in a hospital in particular that's so outstanding like Mackenzie Health is. This funding, both locally and broadly, will give all of our hospitals the chance to invest in the things that most benefit the community that we live in, but also the people. When you think about it, it's not just the community. And we are going to help work, with, we're going to work closely with our hospitals to help them decide where this funding is needed most. So as I said right off the top, today is good news for healthcare here in Vaughan and in York Region and in Richmond Hill. Today is great news for healthcare across the province of Ontario. I wanna thank again, Tony and Altaf and the entire team, both mayors, all councillors, and everybody who's here today. I can see lots of smiling faces. You all know how hard you are working to make this real. It's going to be real in a very short period of time. It is phenomenal to see the progress that we are making on all of the support that's being provided in healthcare to the people of Southwest York Region. And I would say, because I've been the MPP for Vaughan for just a bit more than five years, but there's somebody here today who's gonna to come to the podium next who has been fighting and fighting so hard for more healthcare since he first became the MPP for Richmond Hill back in 2007. He's done it in the government caucus room, he's done it talking directly to the Premier and various ministers of health, and he's done it in the government cabinet room. Uh, there is no stronger champion for healthcare in York Region than Minister Reza Moridi, the local member from Richmond Hill and Ontario's Minister of Research, Innovation and Science. And with that, please join me in welcoming Reza to the podium. Thank you very much. Well, thank you very much, Stephen, for that very gracious introduction. And the good morning, ladies and gentlemen, your worships, members of the council, uh, Althaf and Tony, friends and the colleagues, it's truly a great pleasure to be here this morning to be a part of this wonderful announcement. And thank you very much, Mr. Del Duca, for making this announcement on behalf of our government. And Mackenzie Health is, uh, I've said this many, many times, I'm sure you have heard that it is a jewel in the crown of the town of Richmond Hill, and it's going to be another jewel in the 
in, in our neighboring city of, uh, of Wan. So you will have a, a jewel in your crown, Your Worship, once the building is completed. And then within two years, I believe, uh, this hospital is going to be, to be commissioned to serve the people of uh, southwestern York region. Um, as um, Minister Del Duca indicated, uh, you know, we have been working on this project for a long, long time. Uh, I, 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 I have to actually acknowledge uh, my good friend and the former colleague, uh, Greg Cerbera, who was, um, who was a champion for this hospital since the beginning. And I remember Stephen vividly uh, uh, the day that, uh, uh, just after my election to the, uh, to the parliament, Greg called me to his office on the ground floor of the legislative building. And we sat down and chatted about the concept of uh, uh, one corporation to campus. Uh, and from that, basically, the whole thing started. And um, since uh, he left uh, the politics, and of course, uh, Stephen took over, and Stephen has been a great champion for, for, for this hospital in, in Wuhan. So thank you very much for your advocacy, for your hard work, Stephen, and indeed my colleagues at the municipal level and also at the community level, because this is a partnership between uh, government and governments and, and also the public. And as you hear, this is a project of $1.6 billion project. It's a huge project. $1.6 billion is a, a big money. There are countries in, around the world, among those 200 countries in the membership of the United Nations, some of them, their budget is around that kind of figures. So this is a huge money. But uh, 300 millions of that will be raised from the public. Uh, from the private sector, from public. So that is a partnership, as I indicated. But apart this um, announcement we, uh, Mr. Del Duca made today, our government is also investing in other aspects of healthcare as well. Uh, we are investing, for example, in uh, mental health. As you know, mental health is one of the major issues in our society, in every society, actually. Uh, the stats tells us that one out of four people, and some stats say one out of three uh, of us, uh, develop some kind of mental health during our lifetime. And the mental health, as our former Minister of Health used to uh, mention quite a number of times, Mr. Hoskins, uh, saying that mental health and physical health, they are two sides of the same coin. And without mental health, there is no health care. And that's why our government is going to invest $2.1 billion in mental health. Actually, since we came to the office, we have, been, we have doubled the investments of the government in mental health. So that is another aspect of the healthcare which uh, this government has been doing and it will try to continue its efforts. The other aspect is access to medication. There are people who, you know, go to the doctor and get the prescriptions and they don't have any, um, uh, any insurance to cover the, their prescription. And we know that some medications are quite expensive. If you have a child, for example, God forbid, with chronic diseases and you have to pay um, in some cases, hundreds of dollars per month just to fill those prescriptions for your children. And that's why this government, under the leadership of Premier Kathleen Wynne, introduced OHIP Plus, uh, meaning that every person from the, t from the moment the person is born up to the age of 24, completion of the age of 24, every prescribed medication is free for that person. So this is a great achievement for our society. And it's going to cost, of course, over $500 million per year, which will be paid through our taxes. But I think the money will be spent, because we know that the healthy society, healthy children, they're going to be healthy people. They're going to produce more, and our society is going to make progress. On the other side, uh, people about 65 years old, you know, the seniors, they also need our, uh, our attention as a government, as a society as a whole. In our next budget, we'll be going to uh, introducing uh, OHIP Plus continuation to 65 plus, uh, so that um, every person, every seniors from the age of 65 and above will have free medic prescribed medication as well. I think that's going to be a great service to our society, in particular to our elderly people. So these are some of the things we have done in the province of Ontario in terms of healthcare. And um, as we all know, this is, I mean, healthcare is one of the jewels in the crown of our country, really. When you compare us with other countries, not going too far, just south of the border, we'll see the difference. The difference is, is enormous. One of my friends, he had, uh, he had a stroke just a few months ago, and he was taken to McKenzie Hospital, and from McKenzie to Toronto Western. And when he was there, I hear that he got stroke and he's not in good shape. So I went to see him. His son is a cardiologist and he practices in the States, in, in Connecticut. So he was there. 
and we were chatting. So he said, he said, you know, uh, he calls me Dr. Moridi. He's Iranian, so Iranians always call me doctor. I'm not a real doctor. I'm a fake doctor. <laughs> but anyway, he says, I said, well, you are the doctor. I'm not. <laughs> But he said, I was talking to my mom, his mom, and I said, Mom, you are lucky that you are Canadians. If you were in the States, uh, you should have, or you could have sold your house to pay for my dad's treatment. So, I mean, this is just one example of so, so many uh, people are facing other countries, and we are so lucky uh, to have this, uh, you know, universal medical care or Medicare in our country, Canada. But indeed, we have issues. I mean, no... Um, uh, wherever you go, there's, there are always things to do, there's always issues, but we, we are working very hard at every level in the community, in the government, in the municipalities, to make sure that those issues have been tackled, can discussed, and, and, uh, and of course find a solution for it. And then we are here at Altaf, Tony, to, uh, to help as much as we could, as much as we can with, with the help of Mr. Del Duca and other colleagues in the cabinet, in the legislature. I want to take a moment to thank everyone for being here, and uh, let us keep the good work in serving our community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, Reza and Stephen, thank you so much. Uh, your announcement will go an incredibly long way to improve access for this community, for the patients that come into our doors every single day. Uh, we know that it's challenging to advocate for us against all the other priorities in government and obviously our community against all the other communities. But uh, as Stephen pointed out, we dialogue with Reza and Stephen all the time, probably too much. They're probably kind of annoyed by uh, Tony and I calling them all the time. And it's, uh, it's always asking for something. So at some point, we'll try to give you something back. But, uh, but you are strong advocates for our community. And I think you absolutely do appreciate the challenges and the pressures we face. So we're very fortunate to have you. Uh, in our corner, uh, you know, battling for those scarce dollars, and uh, this will go a long way. But as you probably know, I've already spent that money, Stephen and Reza. So, uh, uh, <laughs> so obviously, we look we look for continued support as we continue to grow and become um, a two hospital organization. Uh, so now I have the privilege of introducing uh, the Honorable Maurizio Bevilacqua, and he's another champion uh, for McKenzie Health and for the McKenzie Vaughan Hospital. Uh, Marissa, we've been on a long journey for a number of years, and uh, it's amazing to see uh, what's just transpiring right, right in front of us every single day uh, with the new hospital emerging uh, out of the ground. And obviously, Maurizio helps in another capacity. So uh, operating dollars aside, Maurizio is our co-chair for the, for the cabinet to ensure that we can hit our targets in terms of our fundraising goals of a $250 million campaign, which is vital to ensure that we equip uh, Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital with what is absolutely required. So Maurizio, I'd love to invite you to the podium now. Thank you. Thank you, Altaf. And uh, you know, yesterday at the York Region Police Services Board, we were uh, discussing some erratic behavior uh, on this site and, uh, and we're trying to figure out which, this car that was going around, remember? This car is going around all time at odd hours and I found out that it's Stephen Del Duca, so uh, <laughs> now, now we've solved that issue. Chief Jolliffe will be very grateful of the service that I'm going to give him. Um, but I do want to say, uh, first of all, uh, to all of you in this room, uh, as Altaf often says whenever we're at a public event and privately, uh, the building that is going up is the manifestation of uh, really a labor of love uh, of this community. Uh, it's, uh, it is indeed been a very interesting journey, uh, but a journey that uh, will never end uh, because loving your community and providing services to the community is, uh, is really eternal in, uh, in, in many ways. And so as I, as I reflect upon uh, the, many, uh, the many milestones uh, we have reached, uh, I'm often uh, really impressed uh, by the great capacity that this community has uh, to really uh, give of itself to this incredible, incredible cause. Uh, this is a hospital we've been talking about now for, for a generation. A generation and generations of people have been talking about getting uh, this building up. But uh, that building is much more than its physical structure. What occurs inside that building is really what's important. And what is important is the people that uh, will give of themselves uh, to provide the care that is so vital. 
I had, uh, of course, my own personal uh, experience with my father when uh, he, uh, he suffered a stroke, and and uh, I saw the the loving care that is given to uh, to patients, and and I can tell you, it's when you go through those experiences that uh, you recognize how important the healthcare system here is in uh, in our community and in did our country. To my to my seatmate Dave. Uh, I just want you to know as well that uh, the citizens of Vaughan, although we're probably getting a disproportionate amount of attention because of the new hospital, because of, uh, you know, being the first smart technology hospital, and, and you know all the ads and advertising that I personally do about this, this hospital, uh, we, we just want you to know, and we want to, to relay this message uh, back, raise it to you as well. Um, to the citizens of <coughs> Richmond Hill, I want them to know on behalf of the citizens of Vaughan that we, we've appreciated all the years uh, that you've provided such important service to us. And uh, I never want you for a second think that while this phase of, uh, of, uh, of growth in healthcare in Southwest York region is really focused on Vaughan, uh, we, we never forget where we came from and we never forget uh, who was there for us uh, when we didn't have a hospital, a very own hospital. So I want to express my gratitude to you. I'd like to, if I can, uh, and I'm not doing this because it's 2018. I'm doing this. I always do this. I want to introduce my colleagues that are here. We're going to start from uh, Tony Corella is here. Tony. Tony also. As a, as a long history with the hospital uh, as well, and we thank you for, for your great efforts. And Sandra Young Rocco is here as well. <laughs> Rosanna De Francesca. And Marilyn Iafredi is here as well. And uh, soon, well, I go according to the, you know, she's arrived last, so I introduced her last, right, Altaf? Sundar Singh is here. <laughs> Sundar. Tony, thank you so much for all the work you do. Altaf, thank you so much for, uh, for all the, the work. and, and uh, uh, of course, Ingrid. Ingrid and I get to work together on the on the campaign committee uh, cabinet, uh, and it's going really well. I'm really, I'm really enjoying that. I know it's 250 million dollars sounds like like a lot of money, but when you put it in, in perspective, uh, as Minister of Economic Development and Growth, you would understand that there are a lot of. A lot of people, a lot of people in this community that they've done exceptionally well. Uh, but what's good about them is that they also understand that they have a, a responsibility to share the blessings that, they, that they've made. And so we're up to over $80 million so far, over $82 million. And, uh, and without, without scooping ourselves, we'll make an announcement, uh, hopefully pretty shortly, that we'll increase uh, that amount. And uh, and provide and, and provide us with an opportunity to actually help uh, help uh, this project. I want to uh, you, know, you told me to keep it short, right? Uh, I want to say a few things about uh, about the present state of of, of our city uh, and why it's been as successful as it has been. Uh, we have benefited a great deal uh, from the partnership with other levels of government. Uh, and I mean, it's not isolated to uh, to this particular building. Uh, it's talking about we, we you know we did the ribbon cutting for the uh, for the for the subway, uh, which has been transformational. It's uh, it's been incredible. We're looking forward to the announcement on the 427. The uh, soon I gathered that uh, I, I knew that, <laughs> uh, but. But I'll tell you, you don't do it on your own. And, and uh, everywhere I go, you have to understand I'm the junior guy, right? I'm the guy with the least amount of money. Um, and uh, so I'm always begging. And, uh, but there's nothing wrong with begging because it's a sign of humility, right? <laughs> uh, so we, we, we do that. But I, I've been blessed. And I tell you, um, Reza, and you would know this because you've, uh, you've seen the minister at, at work. Uh, it, I've been in, in public life now for 30 years. Uh, this is my 30th year, actually, this year. And I'll tell you, uh, like the partnership that Del Duke and I have developed over a number of years has been exceptional. And I can't really remember uh, s such a great partnership uh, in, in 30 years of, of, of public life. And, and uh, 
for that, I want to express my, in a very public way my gratitude for, for also understanding that ultimately the role of, uh, of Apollo, we're not here forever, as you probably know, right? We, we, we don't, we're not mayors forever. We're not MPs. And, you know, what's here forever is the community and, and, and the little fingerprints that you leave uh, at the end of the day. And you've got to make sure that those fingerprints, whatever you do, whether you're exercising Altas role, is that when you uh, look uh, back at uh, the contribution that you have made, and I don't mean this in a kind of pride, uh, egocentric way, I'm talking about the contribution that we're all, we're all able to make, is that you look back and say, you know what, we've made that little difference, that we were part of this creation of this community, that we have uh, been able to, uh, to influence it, send it in the right direction, because ultimately that's what's, uh, what's left. I've talked to a lot of people who have public life, you know, the stage is not always is not there, but uh, but the work that you do is uh, is there, and and for that I want to express to all of you uh, my sincerest gratitude because over the past thirty years it's been it's been a real joy uh, to uh, to represent the citizens uh, of Vaughan because I do really believe uh, that here in York Region we have exceptional citizens uh, who understand the role they play as individuals in bringing about positive change uh, to their community. So uh, before I forget, by the way, thank you for the $21 million. Uh, they make these speech sound so much better. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. So thank you, Maurizio. And uh, in case uh, you're interested, uh, Ingrid does have her credit card machine with her. So uh, uh, as you leave, we'll be, uh, we'll be punching your cards to uh, make a contribution. Uh, we did a teletown hall uh, about two weeks ago where we had about uh, 10,000 residents come online for an hour and we engaged them around the priorities with respect to health care. And they all pointed to the excitement uh, around the Mackenzie Vaughan Hospital, uh, the relief valve it will provide to this community as it increases capacity for services, for beds, for access, uh, for uh, surgery. Um, and they were also uh, very appreciative of the fact that there continues to be investments made to recognize that operating dollars have to come with capital. So we're very excited by uh, what's going on in this community. We're very uh, unique in that we have the largest uh, increase of health capacity of any jurisdiction, I would say, in this province, let alone this country. And we're very excited to work with government to continue to support uh, the operating dollars that go with that, with that growth uh, growth agenda. So again, Stephen and Reza, thank you for your support. Thank you for your ongoing efforts and uh, how you work tirelessly for us at Queen's Park to make sure that our priorities are the number one priorities. Again, uh, thank you for everyone for coming, and it's a very great day for Mackenzie Health and a very great day for our residents and for our patients. So thank you again.